Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Siegfried Armory. Today I'll be showing you how I make butted costume chain mail. Butted mail is not suitable for use as armor. However, for cosplay, LARP, and applications where it won't be subjected to physical stress, it's serviceable and much quicker to make than riveted mail, which I'll be covering in my next video. Quick is a relative term when you're talking about making armor, however. With butted mail, I can produce about a pound of finished armor per hour, and that is on the quicker end of what's possible when you're producing it by hand. When I started making this stuff when I was 13, it was closer to half a pound an hour, so keep the time commitment in mind when you start a large project. The first step in producing butted mail is making sure you have all the tools and materials you'll need for the job. I'll cover these in more detail as the video goes on, but to list them all at once, you'll need a mandrel, wire, wire cutters, and pliers. Links to everything can be found in the description. You can buy all of it on Amazon or theringlord.com. You'll also need some wood to make a frame for your mandrel, basic tools like a saw, a hammer, and some nails to put the frame together, a drill with a bit size of your mandrel, and a clamp to hold the frame onto your table while you're using it. These you can find at pretty much any hardware store like Home Depot or Lowe's. To start making the armor, first take your mandrel and attach the wire to it. If you're using a Ring Lord mandrel, there's a pre-made attachment point for your wire, but if you're making one yourself, you'll need to drill a hole in it to hold the wire while you spin it. If you'll spin the wire by hand, you'll also need to bend two opposing 90 degree angles into the opposite end of the bar stock to make a crank. If you're using a Ring Lord mandrel, you attach your power drill to the end where the crank is and turn it on to spin the mandrel. Spinning the mandrel bends the wire into a coil. Once the coil is at the desired length, clip the two ends of the wire to free it. Once you have some coils made, you can start cutting them into rings. This is where your wire cutter comes in. Of all the tools you'll use making chainmail, the wire cutters are by far the most important not to cheap out on. If you're making your own rings, you'll be cutting easily thousands of them with these, and using cheap cutters can be very hard on your hands. After a while, you should end up with a nice little pile of cut rings. Now you can use your pliers to start putting the rings together in the desired pattern. The most common pattern for armor is called European 4-in-1, so that is what I'll be covering here. The basis of the 4-in-1 pattern is hooking four closed rings together on one open ring to produce what I call a chainmail atom. Under most circumstances, this is going to be the basic building block of anything you produce. To make one, you close four of the rings you just made, then open a ring, and put the four you just closed onto it. Linking these quote-unquote atoms together is just as easy. Once you have several of them, you can produce a chain. To make a chain, you simply open a ring and attach two adjacent closed rings from two atoms to it. This can be as long as you want and is a vertical line of armor. Horizontal expansion is a bit trickier. Once you have two or more chains, lay them flat on the table and slide them together so you have a top chain and a bottom chain, with the places where there are two rings overlapping. To knit the chains together, you bend a ring wide open and then weave it through the gap between the chains. It should go down through the bottom ring of the top chain and the top ring of the bottom chain under it then up through the top ring of the bottom chain, and lastly, the bottom ring of the top chain. To put it more simply, you put it down through two rings and then up through two rings. It sounds complicated, but once you've done it, once it's easy to do it again. Then bend it shut. Repeat this pattern going up the length of the two chains and soon enough you'll have a strip of mail. Lastly, when using this armor you've produced as part of a larger piece, make sure to orient it properly. The chains should be oriented up and down so the armor rests in a compact state. 
If the chains are oriented horizontally, then the armor will be stretched and less flexible. Also, with historical armor, this would offer less protection. There's no limit to how large you can go. This is a suit of armor I made for a gaming convention when I was 15. Between the chainmail and scale armor, it took about 100 hours to make. But, if you have more experience, it can go a lot faster than that. This was one of the earlier things I produced. Anyways, thank you for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and have a nice day.